Lesson three is a short lesson on metrics and measurement, and it contains two main objectives. First, we're going to learn what we measure in CSI, and then we'll talk about why exactly we measure things in CSI. There are three main types of metrics that we pull here in the continual service improvement phase. Technology metrics are the first type of metric that we pull, and these are component and application-based metrics such as performance, availability, downtime, and so on. Think CIs when you think technology metrics. What's the uptime of this server? What's the uptime of this application? How many times did this circuit fail in the last three months? These types of metrics are pulled from availability management. If you can think back to service design when we were discussing the availability management process, we said that the availability management process had proactive and reactive activities. On the reactive side, availability management's job was to pull performance metrics from service operation. And the types of metrics that availability management pulls are technology metrics and service metrics. We'll talk about service metrics in a moment, but technology metrics are CI specific. Process metrics are the second type of metrics that we pull. These are critical success factors, also known as CSFs, key performance indicators, also known as KPIs, and activity metrics for all of the service management processes that we've talked about so far. These metrics can help determine the overall health of a process. Well, who creates these process metrics, and then whose job is it to then pull these metrics? That would be the process owner. Every process that we've talked about so far in this video mentor series has a process owner assigned. And every process owner has four main duties, and those four main duties can be abbreviated as a DEMI, D-E-M-I. So here in CSI is where the process owner is going to measure the process against the metrics that they've set, and then they're going to use that information to then improve the process. The third type of metric that we have are service metrics and service metrics measure the end-to-end -end service. Technology metrics up at the top are used to measure and compute the service metrics. So think of it this way. Pretend that we're going to measure the uptime of the end-to-end -end service of email. Let's pretend that you have 10 servers that work in tandem to deliver the email service. And over the course of a month, you found that nine of those servers had 100% uptime but one of those servers was down almost the entire month. When you measure the entire end-to-end -end service, if those nine servers were able to pick up the slack of the one failing server, perhaps your email uptime was 97%. But the individual technology metric for that one server that was down a lot might only be 60 or 70%, depending on how much it was down. Service metrics are set and pulled as part of availability management's reactive activities, and they're compiled by the service owner. For the exam, you'll need to know the three types of metrics that we pull here in CSI. So you'll need to remember technology metrics, process metrics, and service metrics. How do you remember them? If you've ever seen the movie Office Space, you might remember that the type of reports that the boss was always harassing his employees about were called TPS reports. And here they are. The three types of reports that we pull here in CSI are TPS reports, technology, process, and service. The next question we ask ourselves is, why do we measure? Why do we bother? And there's four reasons, to validate, direct, justify, and intervene, V-D-J-I. You'll need to know these four reasons. When we say to validate, we're talking about validating our previous decisions. So if someone says, why did you choose to make that decision two years ago? We can say, well, because the numbers told us to do it. The D is direct. When we say to direct, we mean to direct our future activities. So if someone says, why are you choosing to go in this direction? Well, because the numbers and the data are telling me to do that. The third one we have is to justify, and that's to provide factual evidence or proof that a course of action is required. And lastly, we have to intervene. And that's where we're going to monitor a process. And if we consistently see that a process breaks in the same place, we can find points where intervention is necessary, we can fix what's broken, and then we can move on. Now, we can also ask, why are we monitoring and measuring this stuff? And when can we stop? And more importantly, is anybody using this data? 
Did you ever write a report and you know darn well that nobody's reading it? Do yourself a favor. Send out an email to the distribution list and say, is anybody reading this? Is there a way I can make this report more valuable to you? Because let's face it, it's no fun writing a report if nobody's reading it. Let's move on to lesson four, where we'll talk about where CSI interfaces with other processes, as well as the roles that are responsible for executing portions of CSI.